So was anyone else really excited, stoked out of their minds for this movie? No? Just, just me? Okay. Alright. Yeah. What is up everyone and welcome to Men Vs. Movies. I'm Griffin as always and today I've got another early review for you. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on Gerard Butler's latest film, Den of Thieves. So Den of Thieves is directed by Christian Gudegast. I believe this is his directorial debut and it's starring Gerard Butler, 50 Cent, Pablo Schreiber, O'Shea Jackson Jr. and more. So the movie takes place in Los Angeles and follows two factions. We've got the one faction of heavily armed bank robbers who are trying to pull off the impossible. They're going to rob the city's Federal Reserve Bank. And we've got another faction, which is an elite unit of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department led by Gerard Butler, who are there to stop them. And that's basically the movie. It's a heist film. The cops got to catch the robbers and there is some moral ambiguity on both sides. So as I alluded to in the intro of my video, yes, I was very much looking forward to Den of Thieves. I'm always a sucker for crime films and crime thrillers, much like this one. And walking out of the movie, I was not disappointed. It was awesome. Awesome. There's a lot to like about this movie. There's some issues that I had with it, but overall, I think it's a great crime heist epic. So let's dive into this thing and talk about it. So starting off here with the positives, the biggest positive of this movie are the three central performances. And the biggest positive out of those three performances is that of Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler is one of those guys who's been in a lot of bad movies, but I don't think that he's necessarily a bad actor. And so walking into this film, I wasn't expecting, you know, anything special. And especially from him, I was just expecting him to kind of ham it up on screen and be this badass epic action star and we get that but there's also a lot more. I think Gerard Butler steals the entire movie, and it's evident because the filmmakers chose to focus on him the most, and that's really just because his character is the most interesting. He's the leader of this special unit of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and he's kind of a bad guy. They allude to it in the trailers, but he definitely doesn't play by the book. He definitely breaks the rules in order to get results, and so there's some moral ambiguity there that surrounds his character, and as a result, when he's on duty, he's very much painted as the bad guy. But while there's that side to him, I think they end up doing something that makes him more sympathetic, which is showing his home life and showing the problems that he's going through there and how his job affects his marriage, his relationship with his kids. We spend a lot of time with him getting to know him, getting to know his emotions, how he really feels about certain things. And there is one scene in particular that I think was a key moment for the character that I don't want to give away or anything, but it was a great emotional moment. And I thought that Gerard Butler pulled out all the right pieces in order to give the best performance he possibly could for the character. Now paired with those nice emotional character moments are these awesome charismatic Gerard Butler moments that you wanted to see in this movie. He's badass and you are very much intimidated by him. He has some awesome dialogue that only Gerard Butler could pull off and he's such an electric presence on screen that without him I don't know how much I would have enjoyed the movie. He really makes the film for me. The next performance that I really dug was that of O'Shea Jackson Jr. Now he gets the second most development aside from Gerard Butler and as a result, he ends up becoming your second favorite character. They do something with his character at the end that I thought was brilliant, didn't see coming, and it's a nice homage to a certain crime film, not gonna spoil it, but a certain one. And overall, he becomes kind of the middleman stuck in this battle between the criminals and the special task force of the police. And so seeing him kind of work both sides in a situation that is kind of difficult for him to be in was really fascinating, and I think what O'Shea Jackson Jr. is showing us is that he is capable of bringing it when he needs to. He can bring these awesome performances of these multi-layered characters. I really dug him in Ingrid Goes West. He was phenomenal in Straight Outta Compton, and he was fantastic in this movie. This guy, I'm telling you, he's on a roll as far as movies go, so watch out for whatever he does next. All right, now the third performance I want to talk about and the final lead of the film was that of Pablo Schreiber. Pablo Schreiber plays the leader of this crew of thieves, and what I liked about his performance was that it was very subtle and there are certain things that happen throughout the movie where he gives a certain look and you just know everything that he's feeling at that moment you know exactly what's going on in his head while his character was the least developed out of the three main leads and I would have liked a little bit more from him which I'll get to in my negatives I still found him to have a presence on screen and when he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gerard Butler it made for some of the best moments in the film the next positive I have with this film is how it's such a well-done homage to classic crime epics 
thrillers and heist films. You can clearly see that the movie's main influence was Michael Mann's Heat, and I think that they do a good job of emulating his style. I mean, no one's ever going to be able to be Michael Mann, aside from Michael Mann, but I think in a movie that's trying to honor the classic crime epics that he made, it does a really solid job. It's not just the cinematography, the setup, and everything that is very man, it's the pacing of the film too, which is both a positive and negative. I kind of like the fact that it wasn't just a non-stop cheesy action movie. They actually gave us time to spend with the characters, get a little bit more intimate with them and understand their motives and understand what's at stake, set up the plan, set up the heist, and build to this ultimate climax of a showdown that you know is going to be simply epic. And in doing all of that, the film is quite enjoyable. It was a really solid homage. So you just heard me mention the action, well, that's going to be my next positive. There are two main action sequences in the film, and the movie is kind of bookended by them. And when those action sequences are going down, you feel the tension you hear the bullets going by, you feel like you're in the streets with these guys ducking for cover and everything. They're shot very well, the sound design was especially well done, especially the final action set piece, it has you on the edge of your seat and I loved the way that they executed it. Okay, now moving on to the negatives, I really only have a few minor ones. The biggest negative that I think you're gonna hear from people about this movie is that it's just way too effing long. Yeah, this movie's clocking in around 2 hours and 20 minutes and you definitely feel the length, my God. And it wasn't something that necessarily bothered me a whole lot, but it was something where I would be sitting in the theater, I would look around and I would definitely notice that we're still in this for a solid 30 more minutes. I feel like if they had shaved 20 minutes off this thing, made it a two hour crime film, kept the same pace in the setup, but just cut out some of the unnecessary filler, the movie would have been much more concise, tighter, and definitely lend to more rewatchability. My next negative has to deal with Pablo Schreiber. As you heard me mention at the beginning, I felt him to be the least developed out of the three leads, and I felt like he needed to be more developed in order for the confrontation between him and Gerard Butler to carry more weight. So the movie spends a lot of time developing Gerard Butler, showing us his family life and how he's balancing his professional career and the stuff he has to do there with being a father and a husband. And the point of all that was really to humanize him for all the dark stuff that he does throughout being this special forces cop. And while I appreciated that, I think that's also where the movie falls flat because they should have done the same with Pablo Schreiber's character. They should have made a better attempt at building him up as Gerard Butler's equal, much like what they did in Heat with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. That's why Heat works, is because you have two sides of the same coin that are both humanized and you sympathize with both of them. And I think in this movie, even though Gerard Butler is kind of a shitty person, you sympathize with him more because we've gotten to see more of his life. Whereas Pablo Schreiber, they give you the backstory in these crime briefings, but that's about it. They really don't dive into him as much as they should have. And it would have been even cooler because you would have had Gerard Butler on one side, Pablo Schreiber on this side, both really fleshed out, and then you have O'Shea Jackson Jr. in the middle, kind of being swayed by both sides. That would have been an incredibly powerful dynamic that I think they missed the mark on here. And then my final negative with Den of Thieves isn't necessarily a negative that will affect my score, but the movie doesn't try to do anything new. Like I said, it's very much an homage to classic crime and heist films, and in doing so, it doesn't necessarily have an identity of its own. I think that that's kind of a problem with the movie. Every movie should have its own identity, whether it's being an homage or not. I mean, look at La La Land. That was an homage to classic musicals, and it still had its own identity. I think Den of Thieves is trying so hard to honor the films that came before it that it kind of loses its own self. And we don't necessarily see Christian Gudegast's direction. We just see someone who's really trying to imitate Michael Mann, and they're doing a damn good job, but I would have liked to have seen his personal take on this kind of a film. And that's it, guys. I ultimately enjoy Den of Thieves. It's a really solid crime epic, and if you love those kinds of movies, you definitely will want to check this one out. It's a long movie, but I promise you that Gerard Butler's charisma and enthusiasm will carry the entire movie for you. You will love it. O'Shea Jackson Jr. is great. And for a January movie, I am seriously impressed with the quality of this film. So for all those reasons and all the reasons I gave throughout my review, I'm ultimately going to be giving Den of Thieves in the fight. fight. I think I'd go as far as to say that this is my favorite movie of January. It's not too crazy, right? Right? Thanks guys for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review of Den of Thieves. I recommend you check it out. And if you have seen the film, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I'd love to hear from you. And while you're down there, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more movie reviews, movie related content. And lastly guys, if you like me specifically, and you like what I have to say, you can always give me a follow on Twitter, at Griff 
Schiller. All right, that'll do for this review, guys. And until next time, take care. <laughs>